Welcome back to Our Canada, Our Future. We're talking reconciliation with Karen Rastoul, CEO of Shared Value Solutions and member of the Doki First Nation. Karen, over the course of your life, um, have you seen significant changes in terms of awareness about Indigenous issues and, and how uh, dealing with them rank as political priorities for governments in Canada? Yeah, I think we are definitely seeing progress uh, from uh, you know, on, from the political parties in terms of awareness uh, and focus and consideration of Indigenous peoples and nations and issues, uh, which is great, it's fantastic. Um, I would say that some parties are better than others. Um, some are better at talking, some are better at doing. Um, but what's important is that uh, we're now at the forefront of that consciousness, uh, which I think is a great place to be. Uh, and uh, of course, we're going to, you know, keep pushing the dialogue to ensure that these continue to be uh, part of the conversation and discourse. In terms of general awareness, though, Aaron, like, I love that I've seen, you know, I love the, the increase in, 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 in people's general awareness. Um, but what I'd like to see more uh, is a willingness to learn. You know, anyone can uh, take the Indigenous 101 awareness course, uh, you know, eat the terrible catered sandwiches and then hop on a bus to Orleans, light up the barbecue in their backyard and forget about what they learned that day. Uh, but the willingness to learn, to process, to understand the story of Canada, uh, how it came to be, but more importantly, giving thought to taking action to what they can do uh, within their personal lives, within their working lives, uh, to build a better Canada. That means engaging with each other on where we have been, uh, where we are now, um, and what we can do uh, moving forward. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I, I wanted to ask about policy proposals. I, I think in a lot of cases, at least uh, from not when it comes to non-Indigenous Canadians, a lot of the proposals often seem to amount to just simply providing more funding to Indigenous communities. Um, is, is helping improve the quality of life for Indigenous Canadians really just a matter of more funding? Is that really what is needed? Is that enough? The financial amounts are required because the situation is so dire. And this at this point is not a secret. We all know that many communities continue to struggle with basics like clean drinking water, mm -hmm. uh, adequate infrastructure. Uh, and so I think at this point we need to question, we could look at the amounts that have been spent and question on what they've been spent on. Uh, and right. to me, uh, in my view, uh, and these numbers are, as you know, are very hard to come by, uh, where has the money been going? And why hasn't the dial moved? Because we're talking about, I think the last budget was uh, over 8 billion and then the feds keep adding, you know, more and more money into it. And yet when you talk to communities, uh, life uh, in First Nations really hasn't, you know, shifted much uh, with the extra expenditures. So it's about the system. The bureaucracy is, is getting a lot of those funds. Uh, we're feeding the machines, so to speak, and we're not putting the money where it matters most. And so we do have to, as a solution, correct the federal policy framework, uh, which in my view is, is creating an avenue for the modern implementation of treaties uh, and so that we eventually don't need the Indian Act and we don't need you know, the entire uh, bureaucratic uh, machinery behind it. Uh, and all the investments can be focused on improving lives uh, of, of First Nations people across the country. Yeah, and I think we'll talk a lot more about the Indian Act a little bit later in the show. Uh, I wanted to talk specifically about economic opportunities for Indigenous Canadians. What, what up until now, in your view, has been the problem, the challenge in ensuring that there are economic opportunities for Indigenous Canadians? And what needs to change going forward to improve the situation? The sentiment that's been created by bad federal policy, namely the Indian Act, has led Canadians to believe that they can steamroll over Indigenous peoples, Indigenous nations in this country. Uh, and so that's the approach that industry took for quite some time. Uh, and then eventually uh, the courts intervened. Uh, Indigenous people rose up, went to the courts. The courts intervened and explained to Canadians that, uh, you know, the legal positioning uh, and inherent rights of First Nations in this country. And then it shifted to consultation and engagement and eventually accommodation. Uh, lately, we're seeing uh, the principle of free prior and informed 
consent brought to us uh, through the United Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which has fundamentally shifted the conversation. Uh, and today, in light of conversations on ESG and sustainability, we're seeing, uh, you know, the, the, the dynamic shift to one of equity partnership, one where First Nations are at the driver's seat.